Part three, guys, continuing with Sam McCoy's book. Welcome back. And welcome back. <laughs> and uh, Sheila's behind the camera. Oh, I, I, we're not even doing these uh, openings or anything. Hatfield McCoy Museum, yeah. FredMcCoy.com. No. Sheila's behind the camera. Hi, guys. Part three. Yeah. Like I said, welcome back. Throughout the many years since the feud, many Monday night quarterbacks, authors, and even historians have tried to figure out Randall McCoy's rationale, his mindset, during and even after the feud years. It's impossible to attempt to figure out what was going through Randall McCoy's mind during this time. Can you imagine? Ooh. Can you imagine everything that happened to Randall McCoy? I mean, Randall McCoy, I don't want to compare him to biblical figures, but that's like Job. In the Bible, Job was, everything in the world was thrown at Job. Mm -hmm. And he prevailed. Randall McCoy, everything in the world was thrown at him during this time. House burnt. Daughters pregnant. Sons and daughters murdered. Grandchildren dying. Wife beaten. A brother murdered. His wife beaten. His nephew mm -hmm. murdered. It goes on and on and on. Yep. Can you imagine the mindset and the struggles? Ooh, wow. That'd be hard on a sane person. That's exactly uh, right. You talk about driving a man. And they said Randall was bitter all of his life. Well, wow. Think I'd be bitter too. He may have been bitter, but he never took the law into his own hands. He never killed a Hatfield kid, a child, a daughter, a son. He never burnt their house down. He never beat Devil Ants' wife. I said once before, Devil Ants and Randall McCoy was totally opposite from each other. Yeah. Black and white. Big Sam McCoy, he agreed not to kill anyone after they surrendered. In fact, the entire posse agreed to the same philosophy. That's why only two were killed during the roundup. Crazy Jim Vance and Bill Dempsey. That's because they pulled their guns and began firing on the Kentucky Posse. Once that happened, it was game on. You know, they took nine people back to Kentucky. We've often asked, mm -hmm. if Frank Phillips was such a bad person, if he was a murderer, if he was a... And, and all of them. Frank Phillips saw these children's hair and head froze to the ground the next day. Yeah. He saw the aftermath. Wow. But they didn't kill them. They didn't kill the ones that surrendered. The ones that surrendered were put under arrest, handcuffed, and taken back to Kentucky to stand trial. Now those two that didn't, first one was Jim Vance. Let's see what he says here about Jim. According to Big Sam, they proceeded to Thacker Holler, the home place of Jim Vance. They had heard Jim and Cap had been seen together. Remember, remember, Nancy Hatfield, remember Devil Ants got upset? You know, we know the, his, the History Channel's movie, the miniseries, was not correct. Right. But right. it showed that they had a spy in the family. Somebody was telling Frank Phillips, somebody was telling the Kentucky Hatfields and McCoys what the West Virginia Hatfields and McCoys were doing. Supposed to have been Nancy, Asa Harmon McCoy's daughter the one that eventually after after they had the cabin massacre in 88 after they killed two more of Randall's kids and beat his wife and burned his cabin Nancy McCoy left John C. Hatfield now you'll hear some of them say oh John C. he was a womanizer and he he left with other women he no 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 Nancy McCoy left John C. because of what he did on the Kentucky side of the Tug River. To her family. And she went and, and married Frank Phillips. You know, John C. Uh, went out west. He went on the run. Why, Cap and Jim Vance, Jim Vance has been killed and all these posses. He got the heck out of there. He left. He wasn't arrested till 1898, I think it was. 1898, 10 years later, 11 years later. Big Sam, let's go back to Big Sam here. This is his book, this is his memoirs. Big Sam says the posse collected or arrested two men, one named John Gooslin and the other Stonewall Klein, and was going to take them along. 
Frank Phillips says he didn't want anyone left behind to run and tell the Devil Ants Hatfield gang that they were coming. Big Sam and Frank had words and disagreed over taking the two men along. Big Sam asked, what if you take them over there and we get into a fight and they get killed? Jim McCoy, Big Jim McCoy, the Jim McCoy that's buried in Catlettsburg, Kentucky, the Jim McCoy that's got that historical marker forevermore over his grave that says he was a peacekeeper. He, he, he went to keep the peace. No, he went for justice. He went to venge, mm -hmm. a, a venge. He owes it to the dead. Uh, uh, he says he owes it to the dead. It's his mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. That he'd never forgive the Hatfields. He owes it to the dead. But yet they got this marker over his grave that says he was a peacemaker. He went along to keep the peace. It wasn't Jim McCoy. So Jim, McCoy's, Jim McCoy's words right here says, what if they get killed? Big, and Jim McCoy says, okay, what about it? So what if they get killed? Meaning he could care less. Jim McCoy was there to avenge his brothers and sisters and his mother. Looking at the big story, this man, Big Sam McCoy, was there and he's telling his story. The only story ever told or written by a willing participant of the feud and even though he says he disagrees with certain actions he was an eyewitness take it for what he says guys mm -hmm. this man was on horse this man was with these guys while they were there eyewitness and again Sheila and I put in a video a while back and it's the truth because Sheila and I are big on physical evidence on documentation yeah we're big on that it, it proves and it's things that was there before Anybody started researching the feud, especially Civil War records. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew Devil Ants Hatfield or Randall McCoy was going to be famous one day for fighting a feud during the Civil War. So why would they say Devil Ants is six foot when he's five six? Why would they say he's five six when he's six foot? They didn't. On his military records is exactly the way it was. He was a private and he was five foot six inches tall. Right. That's it. Yep. Yep. Pure and simple. Randall was six foot. Yeah. Sheila and I have always talked about how important physical evidence, here, here I am discussing it. Physical evidence is proving a point, and it is. Mm -hmm. But an eyewitness, nothing beats an eyewitness to an event, especially to an investigator, and especially an eyewitness that is truthful and impartial. Impartial. Sam McCoy was impartial. Sam McCoy saved lives that day, or yeah. those two or three days that they were there. He saved lives. <clears throat> we know he did. He, he had no reason to lie and say he lowered Randall's rifle or said, Uncle Randall, you said you wouldn't kill nobody if they surrendered. If you're going to do that, I'm going to get on my horse and go back. And Randall lived up to it. That's his nephew. Big Sam McCoy was there. Sheila and I think some people over the years have forgotten Big Sam McCoy and Big Jim McCoy. Confused with each other and their actions. After the cabin massacre, Big Jim McCoy, like his father, was after a revenge. He was after a, a reckoning. But Big Sam McCoy, trying to keep a cooler head, was trying to prevent the same thing that happened in Kentucky from happening in West Virginia. He didn't want the bunch of people that he was with. He didn't want Frank Phillips, Randall McCoy, Jim That's McCoy. Right. He didn't want them over there burning. He tells several throughout his book. He tells several, we're not here to hurt women and children. We're not here to burn nobody's cabin. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Big Sam says the posse went to Thacker Creek to old man Jim Vance's house. He continues, no one was there but a lone woman. A lot of those who have read Sam's book have always thought that that lone woman he speaks of is Jim Vance's wife, Mary. Simply not true, guys. Mm -mm. There was a woman there when they got to that Jim Vance's cabin and Frank Phillips told her, fetch him some water. 
she went out to the well and Frank Phillips and this Pinkerton detective that he talks about went out there and was questioning her. Where's Jim at? Where's this? Where's that? Oh. She wouldn't answer. She wouldn't answer. And they started more or less intimidating her. And Sam calls them off. The woman speaks, uh, the woman he speaks of in his book, Mary, may have been a daughter-in-law, may have been uh, Mary's mother even. We don't know who it was. But Big Sam comes up and says, Lady, you don't have to say nothing. I don't even care if you know where Jim's at. You don't have to say nothing. We're not going to harm you. Leave her alone. And Frank Phillips tells her, fetch me some water. Mm -hmm. And Big Jim McCoy says, get it yourself. Exactly. She's not fetching water for nobody. Good. So uh, that's Jim McCoy. We know that it was not Mary Vance. It may have been Jim's mother. may have been Mary's mother. Mm -hmm. may have been uh, John Vance's. That's one of Jim's uh, sons. may have been John's wife. We don't know. But the woman at the well was not Jim Vance's wife. And here is why. We'd always heard that Mary Vance had taken some vittles to her husband Jim and the nephew. Later in Sam's book, he makes reference to going up the creek from Jim's house and seeing another woman, not the same woman that was at the well. Right. And Sam says, they got near the top of the hill and the woman hollered out, Hello, boys. Who are you? And where are you going? That's what the woman hollered. Mm -hmm. They start riding up the hill, up on up the holler. And this woman sees them coming. And she screams out louder than you would normally scream. Hello, boys. Who are you? And where are you going? Now, in the background, Jim Vance and Cap, she just left her food. This is Mary Vance. This mm -hmm. is Jim Vance's wife. She had just taken food to them. Where had we heard that before? Asa Harmon McCoy. Mm -hmm. What a coincidence. But she hollered out real loud as to warn Jim and Cap, we got some people coming up through here. Take cover. Mm -hmm. One of the guys in the posse, this would have been Mary Vance, Jim's wife. She had just delivered breakfast to Jim and Cap and was walking back when she noticed a huge posse. Mary shouted in a loud voice. I know I've covered this, but I'm going to do it cover my notes. Big Sam McCoy acknowledges that Jim Vance and Cap were sighted by one of the men in the posse. He yelled out, Watch out, Frank. There's old Jim Vance. Old Jim Vance. Some people say Jim Vance wasn't called old. He wasn't called bad. He wasn't called uncle. He wasn't called crazy. No, he was called any and all the above at one time or another by somebody. He was an uncle to somebody, so you know he was called uncle. Mm -hmm. The Hatfields called him bad. After the Popo Tree Massacre where the three boys and then Jim walks over and puts a bullet in each one of their heads and says, dead man, don't talk. Don't hurry one of you ever say I was here. I'll kill you. I'll hunt you down and kill you and I'll kill your families. Yep. Now he told the boys that and me and Sheila had a descendant, a great grandson to tell us this with his own exactly. voice. And we, we believe it. We, we believe that. That's a, a Vance that didn't care to talk whether it's Hatfield, McCoy, Vance, tell the history, let it fall where it may, where it may. Sam says if Jim Vance had kept still, he would not have been seen. But instead, Jim waved his left arm as to saying, here I am, boys, come and get me. And you know, many times, Sheila and I have bragged on Jim Vance, uh, as hard as that is to believe, because Jim Vance, I have said many times, was a man's man. Yep. Jim Vance, in my mind, how I would be thinking, Jim Vance thought that posse was going to hurt his wife. They was going to do something to her in revenge for what he had done earlier. They wasn't because Sam McCoy wouldn't allow it. And by that time, Ran or Jim or any of them, they had no intentions of it. Mm -hmm. But Jim thought they were going to harm him, in my mind, and what Sheila and I think, yeah. Why else would you be waving your arm and getting attention from the posse? You're trying to draw attention 
okay. from his wife. That's mm -hmm. what we think. Mm -hmm. Now, Jim Vance was a mean, mean man. But to those people that Jim Vance loved, Cat, Devil Ants, his nephew, so forth, uh, and his wife, he'd take up for. Sure. He didn't care to fight. He was a fighter. Man's man. You know, it brings me to another point. I saw a, a thing the other day where they've now changed on Jim Vance's Find a Grave and Wicked Tree and all this. Jim Vance Hatfield. No. No, guys. Jim Vance, as far as we know, <laughs> as far as we know, maybe, maybe they know something we don't. That's why we ask for DNAs. You know, got another call the other day. This was pertaining to a McCoy that represents the Hatfield and McCoy uh, or the Pike County Tourism. Sometimes he's been shown in various uh, videos or pictures. Uh, McCoy. And we've asked for all the Hatfields and McCoys that represent the tourism to take DNAs. But this is a new one. And they say, you may want to check this person's DNA. He's not what he says he is. Again, guys, don't get mad at us. I've had a DNA. If you're going to represent these people, if you're going to stand at that well, if you're going to sit in that cabin, my great-great-grandfather's replica cabin, and talk this nonsense, and if you're going to sign these peace treaties that says descendants of Devil Lance Hatfield, and you're not, we need a DNA. We need DNAs. How I got off on that, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Jim Vance. Jim Vance. What's talking about? Now it's saying Jim Vance Hatfield. Mm -hmm. Jim Vance was not a Hatfield as far as anybody's ever proven. Jim Vance's sister married Devil Ants Hatfield. No, no blood relation, just like Perry Klein was no blood relation to the McCoys. Um, Levasi, I'm sorry, not Levasi, but Nancy. Nancy. Jim Vance, I see you looking at me. Thank you, babe. Jim, um, Devil Ants' mother, Nancy, mm -hmm. and Jim Vance was brothers and sisters. sisters. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, not to be confused. Sam says, this is Sam McCoy, eyewitness. He's there looking at him. Sam says, Jim Vance squatted down behind a locust tree and began to fire on the posse, mainly shooting at Bud McCoy, who was wounded and that day, but returned fire hitting Jim Vance in his hip or leg. Bud had borrowed his brother Jacob's 3220 lever action Winchester rifle that day, and now he was glad he did, as he had tagged Jim, tagged him, old Jim Vance. Bud McCoy may not have killed the old man, but he put one in uh, the bullets, met its mark, and shot him in the hip or the leg. That made it where Jim Vance was unable to run. Now he had no choice but to fight. Hmm. Big Sam McCoy says that he did not see Cap Hatfield after he fired three shots. Cap fired three shots at the Kentucky Posse, and once the man had taken cover and the shooting started, Cap had made for his getaway. That's Sam's words. Leaving his uncle, old Jim, to fend for himself. Over the years, some people says, Jim Vance said, get out of here, boy. He don't even both of us dying. Sounds like Jim Vance. I was gonna say sounds like. Sounds him, like him. But it also sounds like Cap Hatfield when it hits the fan to take off. Cap was a mean man from the bush. He was a mean man. You, uh, his his uh, Stephen Hatfield told us stories, and that's a that's Devil Lance Hatfield's great grandson, and he told us stories that was told to him family folklore. But we have no reason not to believe it. Uh, Cap was a mean man from the bush or in numbers. You're going to hear what Sam says here in numbers after a while. You know, so far, you, you got to say, Sam McCoy, he was all right. He took up for them Hatfields. He says Ellison Hatfields was his better friend as he's mm -hmm. ever had in his life. Ellison Hatfield. He had Hatfield. no trouble with them or something. Huh? Didn't he? he said he didn't have no trouble with them. No, no. He said he's him. a good friend as he ever had in his life. Mm -hmm. So remember all that when you get over here in a minute and you read what he says about Devil Ants and some of them. Because he has no reason to lie either way, Sam does it. He's been taken up for the Hatfield so far. Um, Cap made his getaway. Sam says Jim Vance was shot three times in the hip and legs, along with one shot about 
30 yards away from Frank Phillips, a 45 caliber Winchester rifle. The bullet hit Vance over his left eye. A hen's egg would have went through his head very easily. An egg would have gone through that hole from his rifle when he shot and killed Frank Phillips. Now you'll hear stories in life that says Frank Phillips took Jim Vance's brains out and shined his boots with them. Frank Phillips walked up point blank and shot and killed Jim Vance. That's not what this guy says. He said everything else in the world contrary to anybody else. He, he's told his story. He was there. Why would he make it up? He says that Frank Phillips shot Jim Vance from 30 yards away with a 45 rifle, 45 mm -hmm. caliber rifle, okay. which makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen a 45 caliber pistol round, uh, you'll know what a 45 will do. 45, 45 one hundredths of an inch, almost a half inch bullet. That bullet is almost a half inch long. Wow. And, and, and diameter. Cap had been wounded in his hand or arm before departing the abandon and abandoning his great uncle in the heat of the battle. Much like his father had done, Randall McCoy during the heat of the battle in the Civil War. Looks like the trig didn't fall far from the tree. That's my words. And wait a minute, you said much like his father had done and Randall did in the Civil War? Much like uh, uh, his father had done Randall McCoy oh, had during done. Okay. the heat of the battle. I misunderstood, I sorry. I probably missed honey. No, know me. it, I just misunderstood, sorry. But he says that if a twig don't fall far from the tree, uh, if he run off and left, um, uh, Jim Vance, um, that's the same way his father did Randall McCoy uh, during the heat of the battle in the Civil War. That, and again, okay. that's my saying there. Uh, the twig doesn't fall far from the tree. Sam says Jim's wife run over to her husband. This is quote. Sam McCoy says Jim's wife, Mary, run over to and knelt down beside her husband and said, poor old fella, you're gone now. Then a member of the posse identified as a man known as Bill Shanghai Furl said, he'll not be burning no more houses down now. That's what a guy in the posse said. Sam McCoy was there. That's what he's saying here. I have no reason not to believe it. There's a paragraph in Big Sam McCoy's book where he says John Vance, who was the son of Jim Vance, went to his mother the very next morning. This is why sometimes we question whether Jim Vance was even buried or not. This is why he was in a, a, a no grave or unmarked grave or his grave's never been known until they started this tourism thing back home. And they said, here, make a little stone and put it up here and call this Jim Vance. Battery went dead. Guys, we were talking about how certain people was not even buried back then and mm -hmm. and um, where Jim's grave was and all of a sudden it just shows up a, a marker for historical purposes and people to have a place to visit. There's relation out there that's on find a grave and different things that says they're related to Jim Vance. That's no problem. That'd be great to shut Fred McCoy up just like I did on Alan Hatfield and saying let's retrieve his body and let's get those three to five bullets out of that grave to prove that he was shot by anybody. But he wasn't shot by anybody, much less Hubert Bay McCoy, who was on arm. But some of these Vances says that J that's Jim Vance's grave and so forth. It's real simple. Let's see if there's a grave there. Let's see if somebody just stuck a rock in the ground first. And then let's see if tourism just put a uh, marker there. And then let's see if the same place they put the Confederate, <laughs> Confederate tombstone, and, like Jim was a Confederate war hero. Let's dig up right there. Let's dig it up. We bring these diggers in for everything else and find, find all kinds of things. Let's dig it up. Let's take a DNA. We got some comparison. Some of these people says they're related to Jim Vance. They're his relation. We know John Vance was. We know that was his great grandson. We know John Vance. And mm -hmm. we're sure that there's some DNA out there where John was sick in his later years. They've got blood. They've got DNA. Or let's compare it to some of these people that says they're his relation, if they'll take a DNA. This man says, this is Sam McCoy, this is not Fred. Sam says that uh, his son, John Vance, went to his mother. And uh, the very next morning, 
and after his father was killed. And Sam says that John said to his mother, Mother, I want you to tell me the truth. His mother replied, John, if I know, I will tell you. Did father have anything to do in that house burning? The truth is what I want. Mother, he told her. Mm -hmm. His mother said to him, John, all I know is this. He ate supper, talking about Jim Vance. He ate supper here on Sunday evening. And he ate breakfast here Monday morning about 9 o'clock. Is all I know. Now, Sam says that, Big Sam says that, um, John's uh, mother's continents fail. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheila asked Google, what does continents fail mean? The word is used in the Bible to mean face or bearing. The demeanor, their demeanor changed. The account in Mark 10, 17-31 demonstrates this use. The man's continents fell and went away sorrowing could not unfound itself. The mother enters the picture and she's pretty unhappy. Continents fell, face or expression, saying that her face couldn't unfrown itself. It's just another way of saying that she couldn't stop frowning or crying. Wow. Big Sam says that John Vance told him straight from his own lips, face to face. Now, Big Sam's not lied about nothing so far. He, he has no reason to lie. Right. He's talked about the McCoys. He said he's had to keep the peace. He's had to, He said this. So why would we want to take him for some things that he says as the truth and then say, oh, no, he must be lying here. See, we, we don't believe that. We think Sam has been as truthful as probably yeah. anybody's ever yeah. been. I agree. Big Sam says that John Vance, that's Jim Vance's son that just asked his mother, mm -hmm. um... Sure. From his own lips, face to face, said that his mother said, that's all I'll... He says, Mother, if that's all, I'll have nothing to do with this in any way. He got what was coming to him. He's saying that about his father. Mm -hmm. John Vance, the son. Now, John Vance, you got to remember, John Vance had a son named Landon. Vance. Landon had a son named John Vance. That John Vance you may recognize. That John Vance is the John Vance that Ron McCoy and Bo McCoy sued. Ron McCoy from um, Durham, North Carolina, and Bo McCoy from, I think he was from Waycross, Georgia at the time. I think he's from Chillicothe, Ohio. Now I think he's moved. I've tried to make contact with him. I had some questions about the lawsuit I wanted to ask him. And, um, I've not heard back yet, but um, this is John Vance, Jim Vance's son, who later on has a son named Landon. Landon mm -hmm. has a son, and in memory of his father, or in honor of his father, John, he names his son John. Mm -hmm. That John Vance is the John Vance that owns the McCoy property mm -hmm. at Hardy with the six McCoy graves on it. But he says to his mother, Mother, if that's all, because she, she walked off crying and frowning and uh, that's all she said. He was here that night. He was here that morning. He, she's trying to get, like a mother, she's trying not to lie, right. but she don't want to implicate Jim. She knew he wasn't there, but she said he was here, ate supper here that evening, ate breakfast here at 9 o'clock that next morning. Mm -hmm. That would have given him plenty of time. Got back home from Blackberry. No problem. Across the creek, across the river there, especially in the wintertime when the water levels low and he says mother if that's all I'll have nothing to do with any of this in any way he got just what was coming to him that wow. son's talking about wow. his father mm -hmm. now wow. uh, we don't think Jim Vance Jr. felt that way I think he took it a different way but, but here's our point with him saying that, he's there with his mother the next morning. Mm -hmm. Did somebody bury Jim Vance? 
Did his son go bury him? I have nothing else to do with it. He's so aggravated and upset because his father had went to Kentucky and burned a man's house down and beat his wife and killed two more of his children. He, I'll have nothing to do with it in any way. And he told Big Sam this. And very well could have been, and that's, I'm, I'm and, and, you know, I'll tell you when I do that, but I'm assuming. Okay. Sheila and I are assuming that the lady at the well mm -hmm. that Big Jim took up for and said, no, you don't have to fetch their water. They can get their own water. Lady, don't say nothing else. Even if you know where Jim's at, you don't have to say. Nobody's going to hurt you. Right. He took up for that woman. Mm -hmm. Who was that woman? We have a feeling that it was John Vance's wife. And that's why John Vance is talking to Sam McCoy like he is. He's thanking him for taking up for his wife. He knows that he's neutral. He knows that he's impartial. And he's thanking Sam, or him and Sam are having a conversation about what took place. Mm -hmm. And then John goes on and tells Sam McCoy about what he told his mother and what his mother said and what he said. Again, there was people got along before the Hatfield-McCoy feud, right. during the Hatfield-McCoy feud, and after the Hatfield-McCoy. Here's two of them. John McCoy, uh, John Vance, John Vance. and uh, Jim, uh, not Jim, but Sam, Sam McCoy. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. Almost okay. done with this video, guys. The story is not only in Sam's book. Sheila and I were also told the story by, by Jim Vance's great-grandson many years ago. Just as Sheila and I have stated, when it comes fair fight, West Virginia Hatfields were not willing to engage as they were into bushwhacking men or tying them to trees or attacking women and children in the middle of the night. Guys, this is not our assumption. We're not assuming this. We're going by evidence. Event, uh, actual events. Actual, actual events. Mm -hmm. Now, Randall McCoy them's in West Virginia. They go to Devil Lance's house. The posse does. They go here. They go there. They never burnt no cabins. They never killed no children. They never beat no women right. or wives. But the evidence shows that the West Virginia Hatfields, Devil Lance's Hatfield gang did. Yeah. And, you know, here's Sam McCoy again in a minute here. We're going to get to it. Um, this is not speculation. This is from someone who was there. This is the words from an eyewitness. <clears throat> After Frank Phillips had taken Wall Hatfield and the Mayhorns um, to jail, he got together another posse and proceeded back to West Virginia in search of more of the West Virginia Hatfield gang. Sam McCoy says that. By this time, I had got Uncle Randall out of the notion of going back to West Virginia anymore. I imagine Randall McCoy's burying his other two children yeah. during this time. I imagine he's trying to take care of Sarah, who's almost dead at this time. Big Sam McCoy says, I went in order to keep them from killing any of them if they were lucky enough to get any of them. We got to Grapevine Creek in West Virginia and met up with the Hatfields. This is the Battle of Grapevine. Grapevine. This is a couple of days later. Okay. If it hadn't been for Murray Daniels calling to them from the Kentucky side of the river, the Hatfields heard her and retreated up the creek and were crossing the creek when Frank Phillips' men turned the corner up the creek. Hatfields fired on them. Phillips' men took cover and began firing back, but... The Hatfields would not stand and fight. They run. Now this is Devil Lance Hatfield. This is on your history channel there. Devil Lance standing there shooting and carrying on. This is your West Virginia Devil Lance Hatfield that you see on the history channel. You got Randall McCoy drunk running in the trees. Well, mm -hmm. actually Randall mm -hmm. McCoy, according to Sam McCoy, wasn't there on that day. He wasn't there at the Battle of Grapevine. He was there at the killing of Jim Vance. He was there at the uh, other things, but he wasn't there on that day. You had Randall McCoy running in the trees, drunk, on the History Channel. Using God's name in vain. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Big Sam McCoy says he never heard the story that was printed in a Master Detective magazine he read in 1931. Daggone it, I meant to have that up here. Sheila will put that magazine at the back of this video. Yep, yeah, I'll show her. Fred and Sheila McCoy are in search of this magazine. Yeah. And the McCoy family with We're the Hatfield McCoy Museum. 
And he says it was 1931, Master Detectives Magazine. It's not. It's actually 1930. Mm -hmm. 1930, Master Detectives Magazine. Devil Lance Hatfield said he set a trap. Now, remember, Devil Lance died in 1921. So this story was this story was out of whack or told by somebody else in the family or something. But it says mm -hmm. that Devil Lance told him that he had once set a trap for two detectives and so forth. Sam McCoy says that story is not true, just as most of the big tales most have heard about Devil Lance Hatfield. Big Sam has some insight on Devil Lance and the brothers from back in that day and time. Sam says, I'm quoting, Devil Lance and his brothers all were men that did not have much grit, except they had backers. Then they were dangerous. You get that? That's yeah. not Fred. Yeah. This is a quote from Sam McCoy, who's been taken up for the Hatfields. But he says that Sam says Devil Lance Hatfield and his brothers all were men that did not have much grit, except that they had backers, power in numbers. They felt confident. I've always said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Devil Lance sticking his head out behind the tree at the pawpaw trees. Are, are, are they tied up? You sure they can't get loose? And then he comes out and shoots them. Come on. That's what we're dealing with here. 20 men, at least 20 indicted for shooting three naked McCoy boys tied to trees. Wow. I did not know some of the boys were such cowards as they were until the detectives got stirring around. They would bunch up and stay together. That's not Fred McCoy. That's Sam McCoy. He was there. He knew it. He knew these guys. As Big Sam talks about Frank Phillips in his book, he tells of how brave as a man as he ever met. He says Frank Phillips is a braver man as he ever met, but he didn't know when to stop. Mm -hmm. I can only think to myself, well, he didn't get his nickname of Bad Frank by attending Sunday school. That's Fred McCoy. I don't think that's any doubt that Bad Frank Phillips wasn't bad. We don't think he got his nickname Bad Frank from going to Sunday school. Sam tells of several times that Frank was shot, but always pulled through. The last time Frank was shot was by his friend. He was shot in the hip and the leg, and his leg was amputated. Gang Green said in, he died nine days later. After he had shot, after he was shot, and that ended so that the life of one man who was feared, who feared no one, Sam says. He says that Frank Phillips died, but he feared no, no man. Yeah, right. Sam McCoy says, quote, I always reminded him as full bravery. I says, Frank, a good run is better than a bad stand. Said he used to try to tell Frank Phillips, sometimes it's better to run and live than to stay and die. In closing this chapter on T.C. Crawford and Big Sam McCoy's book, Sheila and I were talking how ironic it was that Jim Vance and Devil Ants had tracked Asa Harmon McCoy's mm -hmm. wife's Patsy through the snow after she had taken breakfast to him on that snowy January 7th morning, 1865, as he hid in the cave. Then in the end, almost 23 years later, to the day, Jim Vance would be tracked down and killed after his wife, Mary, had taken his breakfast to him on that cold January the 8th, one day later, mm -hmm. morning in 1888, as he hid in the woods. Wow. Guys, I forget what part this is. Three, uh, four. I think it's three. But, um, and we're sorry to drag it out. but It's going to be a little bit longer than the others. That's of okay. Yeah. But we wanted to give you some intake. That's right. Now, Sam McCoy, just hold it right there a second. Sam McCoy's book is no longer available. Right. I think we gave 300 some dollars for that book. I think we got that off eBay for 300 and some dollars. Oof, yeah. Or maybe an old bookstore, an old uh, antique bookstores that specialize in things. Mm. But that is an interesting book. And that is that a book is. that you won't hear from a lot from the West Virginia Hatfields or any of these people. You know, Altina Waller, she'd rather quote Otis Rice. Otis Rice was from West Virginia. Uh, who would you take up for? West Virginia Hatfields or Kentucky McCoys? Why do we have to take up for one party or the other? Why don't we just tell it? Big Sam mm -hmm. McCoy told it as true as he could, I think, mm -hmm. and Sheila does. He mm -hmm. was there. 
He talked about Devil Lance, but he also talked about Randall and different ones. Yeah, he told the good, the bad, and the ugly. He told the good, the bad, and thank you, babe. That's a good way of putting that. <laughs> mm, I missed a good... Chucky oh. darn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> guys, Sheila will do the closing, and I don't know if we got documents and stuff she'll put at the back, but um, it's in the book, and... Uh, in other words, you don't have to buy it. We did for you, but uh, right. if you ever get a chance to read that book, it's an interesting book. And we didn't cover, we didn't cover near everything. And, and Sam's got, he's even got pictures in his book mm -hmm. of different family members. There's the old whale, and we've got a replica of the whale that looks like that downstairs. Since then, mm -hmm. they have remodeled the whale. I wish they wouldn't. Everybody wants to change history, remodel things, change things. That whale was perfect just the way it was with Randall standing beside of it and Jim McCoy and his family members, but we mm -hmm. got to put rock around it. We've got to change it out. That's up to everybody's. That's, that's uh, not. Yeah. If, not like I tell Brian and Bo McCoy, like I say to them, if you want to change somebody's property or want to make it public or you want to charge people to see graves, buy it. Same way with the whale, I guess, if you... Uh, don't like what's going on with something, I guess you put your money where your mouth is. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of money. Exactly. <laughs> but um, the whale looked good like it was, but it's none of my business. That's right. Sheila will do the closing. guys hope you're having a great day please like subscribe and share and we'll catch you on the next one bye thank y'all